Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Justin Bethany about supporting the mental and physical health of your people. Justin Bethany, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Eastern Oregon. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about health. We're going to talk about mental health, physical health, and really generally how we can go about fostering better health within ourselves, our homes, our families, um, but also as leaders in organizations. We know that the great resignation is upon us. The COVID um, pandemic has really driven uh, higher levels of stress and anxiety and depression and, and concerns about the mental health states of people in organizations. And there's been lots of burnout and those sorts of things. And so it's, it's, just as important, you know, as, as it is important for me in my personal life to make sure I'm paying attention to my health. It's just as important for leaders to be paying attention to not only their personal health, but the health of the members of their team as well. And of course, there's a bottom line benefit to that because the more healthy your people are, the, you know, your lower rates of absenteeism and turnover and those sorts of things, which helps the bottom line, they're more productive. Um, but there's a strong human case for this too. And we just need to be better for our people and not take advantage of our people, not exploit our people, but be supportive of them. And I think the pandemic has demonstrated that organizations where leaders show more empathy, where they provide more support, um, they tend to do better. And, that and people want to work for those types of organizations. So these are the types of things we'll be discussing together today. As we get started, I wanted to share Justin's bio with everybody. Justin currently operates a private practice as a psychiatric nurse practitioner in Bend, Oregon. His practices focus on helping both children and adults overcome common mental illness symptoms through a combination of therapy, health coaching, and limited or as needed psychiatric medications. In practicing psychiatry for the past 10 years, Justin has gained a greater understanding of the connections between the mind and the body. After spending the better part of his career incorporating functional and integrative approaches to mental health treatment, Justin gathered all of that knowledge and compiled it into an easy to digest book entitled The Mental Wellness Diet, Ancient Wisdom, Evolving Science, and Modern Day Options. Justin also publishes regular blog articles and social media posts to help explain the connections between our diet and lifestyle and our mental and emotional well-being. You can learn more just by going to his Instagram, LinkedIn, and his blog, the Mental Wellness Diet blog. Uh, and Justin, anything else you would like to share with us by way of background or personal context before we dive on into the conversation? Yeah, that was great. I think uh, the main website is uh, the mentalwellnessdiet.com. <clears throat> That's the best place to get to all of that information you just shared. And thanks for that intro. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so let's let's start perhaps... Um, it's best to just get a lay of the land. Like what are you seeing over the last couple of years in terms of, you know, the people you're working with, they're coming in with challenges um, and, and issues. And I imagine you see some common themes. So what are some of the types of things that you're seeing uh, and why should we be paying more attention to this? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, for um, most of my career, uh, for the few exceptions, in psychiatry, there's a term, the, the walking well, and I think that term is going away. But 
it's people who are experiencing depression, anxiety, maybe some other common mental illness symptoms, but are also coincidentally highly functional. You know, so they're, they have kids, they're taking care of their kids, they're going to work, they're paying the bills, they're getting everything done, they're checking all the boxes, but they're suffering. And so in the different clinics that I started working out at, those were the, the people that would be tending to come through. And so these are individuals who often worked in corporations, organizations, uh, public agencies. They had big, important responsibilities at home and at work. And um, at some point, you know, most of them hit a certain kind of breaking point. And, and that's when their symptoms began to emerge. And that's where I came in. So some, some common themes, that's a great uh, question. Common themes um, is, you know, in life, uh, there was a great book, The Road Less Traveled by Scott Peck. In the first couple of chapters, he talked about uh, the differences that people can uh, handle stress. You can either be on one side of the spectrum of an internalizer and you're reaching across the table and you're pulling onto yourself all the dysfunction and bad things, bad outcomes in the world. You're uh, pushing it inwards and that's guilt and shame and depression, and anxiety. And on the other end of the spectrum, it's the externalizers. And when there's dysfunction or discomfort, they push that away. They push that outward. More often than not, the patients that, I, that come to see me are, are tend to be internalizers. And that creates a, a really interesting dynamic with their home life, uh, their own self-esteem, how they think about the world, how they think about themselves, how they think about their symptoms, and how they interact at work. So at work, you know, that that's uh, corporate America. It's a very unique culture. It's a, it's a very individual, uh, individualism kind of culture versus the collective. And so it, it's really difficult for people who have uh, any degree of internalizing, taking on feeling bad, feeling guilty, feeling shame to exist in a collective at home and a collective in their own personal you know, the way they see the world, but then to find ways to exist in, um, at work, it can be really difficult and we can talk more, but I'll give you yeah. the answers. Well, and, and it's, it's worth noting that we spend a good chunk of our lives for many people, the vast majority of our lives working, uh, at work, you know, we think of our, our waking hours and we spend so much of that time working. And so we can't just neatly compartmentalize you know, what our stress is at home. And then we, we walk in the door at work and all of a sudden we can just shut that off and just work. That's not the way people function. That's not the way our minds are work and, and our mental health and our physical health bleed both ways. Uh, and so if you have a really stressful uh, time at work and you go home, every spouse, every partner knows that when their partner comes home from work after a really hectic, hairy day, that, they're going to need some time to diffuse and, and to, you know, to, to chill out a little bit and, and they need some support. Um, and, and sometimes that stress can come into the home and it can stress everyone else out at home. So, and it goes both ways, right? So we just need to first acknowledge that, that that's the reality. We can't just neatly compartmentalize. Uh, most people can't anyways. And, and I like your, your point about, um, how we, we might try to push down within ourselves. And that's partly, I think that the corporate culture that you're describing is traditionally the culture has been show up to work. I don't care what's happened outside of work. Just make sure that you put on a brave face, make sure you, that you smile, make sure that you're quote unquote professional uh, with your team and with your clients and just push everything down. Just, just ignore it, shelf it, whatever. Uh, and that can be extremely unhealthy. And so then you have people that are just bottling it up and, and it takes its toll over time. They might be able to do it for a short while, but it starts to take its toll. Um, I, I was listening to another podcast just the other day um, where someone was talking about their anxiety. They had a diagnosed anxiety disorder, uh, but because it went untreated, uh, it just started to build and build and build. And then there were secondary effects of that that ended up launching this person into depressive episodes and, and other sorts of things as well that weren't necessary, that wouldn't have necessarily happened. Right. And so there's, there's just a close connection between all of these things and we just have to deal with it. I, 
I've been open with this on the podcast before, but I take a medication for anxiety. Uh, I've battled with depressive episodes in the past. Um, I have seen a therapist. Uh, I, I, my suspicion is that the vast majority of people probably could benefit from seeing a therapist from time to time. And, and I try to very proactively uh, do things to practice self-care and to, to protect my mental health. Uh, I, I joke and I mention it on the podcast a lot. So anyone listening, you're probably like, oh, stop talking about your dumb dogs, but I walk my dogs. I walk my dogs. I have two wonderful dogs. Um, I walk them a couple times a day. That's like one of those outlets for me. Right. And everyone has their things, but you just have to make sure that you're paying attention to those. And as a leader in the organization with my team, I need to make sure I'm paying attention to each of my people because they may feel wh whether that's my intention or not they're probably feeling like they need to just push it down. They just need to, to put on a brave face. They just need to deal with it on their own. And the truth is we don't need to deal with it on our own. We can ha support each other in this. Uh, sometimes it's medication. Sometimes it's therapy. Uh, sometimes it's just doing other ha healthy behaviors that can you know, help you be more, more level. Right. Totally. Yeah. And thank you for that disclosure. I mean, it's, it's what we all need to kind of um, put out there more. And that's it's very courageous of you. Thank you for that. I think, um, you know, what I was thinking about as, as you were talking is this unspoken thing that happens. You know, um, you probably watch Mad Men, and that is the most uh, like obscene example of a boss who says, you know, just shut up and do your job. Well, that was like the 1950s and, and things have changed. It's not quite like that anymore, but it, it's kind of more subtle and unspoken. Um, you, you know, what I noticed is... Um, some of the patients that work in larger organizations and corporations, uh, I kind of will ask a little bit about the organizational chart and either it's like above them or on the same level, you know, and a lot of times in organizations, there's like engineers or people like doing the work. And then there's like the product and the business and development side. And, and, um, there's a lot of friction there. And, um, I think a lot of managers, if, if any managers are listening, leaderships are listening, the, when an, uh, a person underneath you or maybe ancillary, uh, you know, an engineer and you're on the product and development side, if they walk into the room with you, there's something there. There's a mist in the air. There's a sort of Wizard of Oz. You have this big, deep, booming voice. You are kind of intimidating without really um, probably being aware or, or wanting to be that way at all. That's probably not doesn't fit with your principles and values. But uh, there's just that something there about uh, we've been enculturated in our work culture to understand that, you know, we got to get it done in the bottom line and performance and uh, all these metrics and that that communicates to people that they got to get it done no matter what. And what that leads to for a lot of people is um, a concept in psychiatry called repression. You know, there's this, these impossible situations that we face and we can just kind of go blank and proceed to you know, move on and, and just stuff it down and if that that stuffing it down uh proceeds for too long that's like the fertile soil for some of these mental illness symptoms like anxiety and depression to come out at least that's what i've seen yeah and and maybe you can speak to just in your own practice what if, if you've seen any trends over the last say five years obviously with the pandemic being the last couple um have you seen an uptick have you seen shifts in the types of symptoms people have been having as they've been coming in or or the the level of um urgency or concern you know over the types of things people are dealing with describe that for us a little bit sure you know one pattern i've noticed is um patients will come in we'll talk my stance is to support them to be there for them to kind of uh, lead them to the truth to lead them to uh, a plan of coping that's sustainable and doable and effective. And so, you know, as they come in, they'll, they'll talk about how, uh, you know, a boss, you know, had a, like a, a tantrum in a meeting or uh, these demands that just keep being placed upon them and the boss isn't really communicating or uh, some, you know, on, you know, when the organizational chart is like parallel, you know, the engineers are doing their best and then the development side is criticizing them or saying it's not enough or setting too high expectations, things that are unreasonable, but uh, would be pleasing to the board probably. And so there's all these kinds of frictions and um, they'll explain the setup to me and I'll get all riled up and I'll want to support them and I'll want to pull my own hair out, even though I don't have any left. 
And uh, then there's a turn for them. There's like their, you know, their response is reflective of probably their response in, in typical life. It's like, well, you know, well, yeah, you know, I, I guess I just got to, you know, but it's a good company. You know, they're, they're, they want to kind of swing a counterbalance and say, but, but I like my job, but I like the people, but it's a good job, but it's a good company, but it gives good benefits. And that's repression at work. You know, it's it's okay to be upset with another person. You know, that's kind of one of the main lessons that we teach as as therapists. Uh, it's okay to have a conflict. It's okay to to want to advocate for yourself when somebody else is not looking to want to cooperate with that. And so, in these moments, uh, you can't be angry at your boss. So it get that's kind of how it gets stuffed down, and that's kind of how it resides in there and 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 festers and burns a little pit in your stomach. Yeah. And what happens as those things go unaddressed and, and that pit gets deeper and burned hotter? Well, you know, we do our best to talk about it. We do our best to build awareness. We do our best to um, practice in the moment saying to ourselves, OK, I know what this is. OK, this is this. This is not a reflection of me. It's about building ego strength, I guess. And then there's the other parts of treatment, which is sleep, diet, exercise for me and and the time and space and the therapy and then the medications, uh, SSRIs or, you know, Prozac, Lexapro, Zoloft. These are really common medications. You know, in my opinion, these medications help people uh, de-latch, kind of get less stuck on the negative, you know, versus they're not quite happy pills, but they make you predict the negative less. So you can kind of walk into work and deal with these situations or come home from work and deal with those situations with a little bit less weight on your shoulders and you can just kind of make it through another day. And I think that's kind of how they, they mostly work. Yeah. Yeah. It's super interesting. Uh, I, I'm wondering also, so you mentioned things like just sleep, uh, <laughs> having healthy sleep patterns makes a big difference. Things like diet make can make a big difference. Uh, let's talk about that for a minute. What are some of the things that you're seeing between diet and mental health um, and the types of mental illness systems that you see? And, and, you know, if, if we think about that, personally, you know, then if we step back and think as leaders, you know, what are some, you know, we, we don't want to dictate what everyone's eating, obviously, but there are things we can do to try to encourage and nudge people in a more healthy direction. Uh, so perhaps if you have any ideas on that as well. Sure. Um, you know, I was at a, a comic comedy show the other day, and this comic had a, a bit about uh, elementary school. He talked about eating uh, spaghetti meatballs and then going out to recess and running around for half an hour because that's how digestion works, uh, which is a, you know, a funny commentary. But it's true. I mean, um, most people are at work eight hours or more, and that's going to cut across a few meal times. So, um, you know, there's what we eat, and that is probably about as hard as changing somebody's politics or religions, changing what they what they will eat. But uh, there's how you eat, too, and there's who you eat with, and then there's the, the time and the space that you make. Um, you know, in terms of the great resignation, my two cent opinion is that I think people will come back to work when the office has a gym, a dry cleaner, a daycare, a nice cafeteria, and uh, opportunities for limited but uh, impactful socialization. So yeah, I mean, I don't think it would be uh, appropriate for leaders to uh, give everybody my book and tell them to eat my diet. Uh, you know, half of this book is about food, but the other half is about some of these cultural phenomenons and then a lot of brain science and information about what our brains and bodies need to uh, feel so for us to feel and function at our best and we can cover some of that stuff but more importantly i think is, is some of the topics we're discussing now about uh the stress experienced at work yeah and and just to comment on uh you know bring bringing people back in and the types of services that maybe our organization provides um i've shared this before uh, probably on a couple different episodes long ago on the podcast but uh, years ago, I worked uh, for a, a tech company, one of the major tech companies in South Korea. Um, and this was, I mean, this was 20 years ago, uh, probably a little bit more than 20 years ago. And, but think Google, like in the US and think of all the perks and all the different things that they do. And that's kind of how it was there. Like they literally had just about everything on campus. And in fact, I lived in campus housing. So they, I had housing 
Uh, I had three meals a day in the cafeteria. Uh, I and snacks and whatever they had, you know, ping pong and basketball and soccer. And they had, you know, you get your hair cut, you could go grocery shopping, like you, you do everything. They even had like on site Buddhist temple that you could mm-hmm. go, you know, meditate, like you could do whatever you want. Like, literally, you could do everything and live your life there just about. And that's what they wanted because the culture, the work culture in Korea was also show up at seven in the morning, stay till like, eight, mm-hmm. nine, 10 at night. Um, so you, you literally, it's like every waking moment you're there. And so if you need to take care of stuff, okay, but then get back to work. And that was kind of the mentality. So it did mm-hmm. lead to, you know, productivity gains for them and whatnot. But, uh, there's also kind of the dark downside to, to offering all of those things too, because then there's like this sense of, of control and like everything is not, not that they dictated everything, but everything was, um, provided and therefore it seemed almost unnecessary to ever leave you know the the campus and and people have lives they're more than just their work life and they're more than just you know their identity as an employee for this company so i i suppose that's you know the the trade-off right and we have to f- strike that kind of a balance yeah definitely definite balance there with with helping people live a fuller life but then also not taking on too much response leadership taking on too much responsibility we're inviting the people to be at work 24 seven. Well, Justin, this has just been really fun. I know we've just scratched the surface. There's so much more we could talk about, um, but I, it's really helpful to be thinking about the connection between nutrition, um, diet, mental health, physical health, all those things, they're all interconnected. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, of course, we can't compartmentalize. And, and so we, we as leaders in, in our organizations, if we want our teams to be productive and effective and innovative and all of those things, then this is a, a really key important component that we just have to be willing and able to address in a meaningful way. Uh, so let's keep an eye out for the mental and physical health of our people. Let's be as supportive as we can be without overstepping and without, you know, being inappropriate. Um, and, and let's, let's just, show more empathy and support. And I think that will go well for us. It'll help us feel fulfilled as leaders. It'll help our people be more healthy. It'll help the organizations that we serve in um, thrive. And it's just a win. Uh, Justin, this has been a pleasure. Before we wrap up, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, where they can find your book, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Great. Yeah. So uh, I have the book, it's in paperback. It's in Kindle and it's an audio book. Uh, all of that can be found at the mentalwellnessdiet.com website. Uh, and it has pretty much everything you need to know about me in the book. And uh, the book is is um, something that, again, it, it's a culmination of everything I learned. It's meant to be user-friendly, something that people can take advantage of right away. Uh, learning about what things to eat, we have which nutrients do what things in the brain. Uh, it's really interesting and entertaining, if, if not educational. So that's that. And then... Um, you know, I guess, I guess the, the final word for me is, uh, you know, people need a lot and we have to take care of ourselves and we have to understand that other people have those needs. There's probably a line for leadership, how much you want to take on, but just um, acknowledging that for people goes, goes so far. And I think that would be the final word for me. Perfect. Thank you, Justin. It's been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Justin can do for you. Check out the book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe. You can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.